Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from CRT Designs and I'm going to do a little unboxing of the kit that I recently got in the mail and then we're going to jump in and make five cards. So this is the limited edition Seasons of Joy card kit from Simon Says Snap. Uh, it came out I believe the end of November um, and it was a limited edition of kit so you had to get grab it kind of quickly. Uh, and I managed to grab one. I mean, I know like four kits came out at the same time there, but I just want to do a quick look at everything that's in the kits so you guys remember, and then we'll jump into making some cards. So <laughs> let me just pull all the goodies out of there. And we'll take a quick look at, oh, there's a the candy. I wonder if it's a mint. Hmm. So this kit, of course, the limited kits don't come with the sheet of paper like the monthly do ones do, so I kind of have to guess a little bit at what's in here. But there is some Simple Stories uh, ephemera, which is their vintage rustic ephemera. There's kind of like a look of everything in there, and there's currently 56 pieces. There's some really cool stuff in there, so we'll have to see what we can do. And then there's some envelopes. So it looks like there's a little gift card envelope in Schoolhouse Red. And then we have two metallic ones. I believe this is their gold and this is their apple, green apple, I think. And these are cool because you don't have to lick them, which I appreciate. So there's some envelopes. And then we have, oh, that's so, oh, it's like a small version. That's so cool. Okay, then we have a Santa Claus die. He's. It's actually the outline of Santa Claus, which is pretty neat. And then there's this little Merry Christmas die. Which is kind of funny because if you saw my parcel unboxing from Black Friday, I actually got a bigger version, I think, of almost this exact same die. So that's really cool. This is a small Merry Christmas die. And I, I, like a candy bag to decorate. That's kind of neat. Huh. I don't know what we'll do with that, but that's cool. And then a really pretty picture from Simon. This probably has, oh, it doesn't have the, the, the monthly numbers on it, but that's okay. And then we have this really beautiful... A 3d embossing folder and if you guys have been watching my channel for a little while you know how much i love these so this is the christmas floral version and all of these are available outside of this specific kit i mean if you got the limited kit then you got it at a pretty good deal but they are available outside of it so then we also have the simply storeland <laughs> simply simply stories simple stories boof, woodland bits this is their rustic vintage so oh they're both oh they're both like rustic vintage Christmas so this one just has some like animals and stuff in it so that's pretty cool and then we got the Tim Holtz ideology Christmas Noel stickers so I think these are mostly like sentiment stickers and that kind of thing which is super neat because you just oh there's even some tags in there that's cool oh and like huh, like washi tapes and stuff really neat okay that's cool and then we get to the paper pad which I'm not totally sure who it's by, but if it's still available, I'll link it down below. And it's a very rustic feel. This whole card kit kind of has a rustic feel to it. Oh, and mine felt it's not stuck together there. Ooh. So we'll just do a quick flip through of the pattern papers. That's quite pretty. And then we have some card bases. I believe these are done in Simon's Cream cardstock. So those will be pretty perfect for a rustic card and I th think there's three bases in here yeah there's three card bases in there so those come in there and then these are the uh rub-ons I believe yeah remnant rubs these are Tim Holtz uh Christmas remnant rubs which I've never actually used so that should be kind of a neat thing to play with and I'm pretty sure there's that uh <laughs> like popsicle stick is in here as well I can feel it in the back so there's that and then we have the stamp set from Simon so this is stunning it's the season of joy stamp set and this big beautiful image really caught my eye when the kit came out and of course the kit's always such a good deal that I really enjoy picking up the kits they're a great way to build your stash and I loved this sentiment I just love the two fonts of this together I think they're stunning so and then the happy holidays of course is also really pretty so this I'm really excited about we're gonna have to to do some coloring and then there is this <laughs> stunning stencil so here I'll show it to you maybe on the red it might be easier to see although here is a uh, oh it's a slimline card envelope uh, in cream so that's really cool and then here you can kind of see this isn't that stunning I'm so excited about that I love snowflakes uh, so so much so now it's a slimline sized stencil which is awesome and then we have cardstock we have quite a few pieces here and I'm gonna guess at the colors I'm not a hundred percent sure 
but I believe this is Simon's Fog Green Apple, their white and their schoolhouse red, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'll link it down below. And then we have a couple of fun pastes here. We have a glue stick to adhere all of our fun elements. And then we have the texture set from Tim Holtz's Christmas release. So I don't know if you'll be able to get this anymore. This was an exclusive to his Christmas release. Uh, if you can, it will be linked and listed down below. But that is everything that came in the kit. So let's jump into making some cards. All right, let's jump right into the first card. So for the first card, I am going to use one of those pre-scored and cut bases and the cream there. And I am cutting down a panel. This is the cardstock that came in the kit. And I'm cutting it down to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 base, uh, just because I like to border everything. And then I brought in the Waffle Flower spotlight stencil and I kind of lined it up to be very close to the top of my panel and I want to create a blended background but I want it to be in a circle so I brought in shaded lilac and tumbled glass distress oxide ink and my domed foam and blending brushes and I'm just going to blend between those two colors I love these two colors for a more Christmassy-esque I know this isn't a really traditional color palette necessarily but I'm a really big fan of these two colors for Christmas cards. You'll see I bring them back in uh, in the mini slimline card later in the video, but these are two of my favorite colors for ink blending for Christmas style cards. And I took multiples of the silhouetted images from the stamp set in the kit. I have the deer, I have two trees, and I have the like star. I also have a sentiment, the Merry Christmas sentiment. And honestly, one of the biggest reasons I bought this kit was because I loved this stamp set. And these like mixed font uh, sentiments. So that's, I mean, it's not the only reason I bought the kit, but it was one of the big sellers for me because I loved mixed font stamp sets. And there you see, I'm just trying to pick a cat hair off of my stamp. That is an ongoing issue here. Uh, we have five cats. So uh, we, uh, the cat hair is always a bit of an issue for me, but I stamped it twice just because these are brand new stamps. They're not conditioned yet. And then I am going to bring in one more tree and just kind of stamp it on top of the other tree. I didn't really want to differentiate them. I want it to look like they're together, uh, but I had to stamp them separately because obviously I couldn't layer them if I had one uh, and both of them in at the same time. And then I brought the three little snowflake stamp sets out of the stamp set as well. And I'm gonna just stamp them down in some tumbled glass distress oxide ink. Um, it's gonna match really well the background. I mean, I can see them. I don't know that they come up well on the camera, uh, but it just added a little bit more texture to the background. And then here I just brought in my white jelly roll pen, and this is just me fixing anywhere the cat hair hit the ink when I was stamping my sentiment or the trees. Uh, and I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit because the card base, it is, I think the card base is honestly, actually the card base is cream, but I think this panel is actually ivory. I don't think it's cream. So you can't really tell that I used that white gel pen on it. It's pretty, it blended in pretty well. And then of course, because it's me and it's a Christmas card, I had to add some uh, Perfect Pearl splatter to the background. And I'm gonna bring in my white gel roll pal, gel, my, right, my white gel pen, and just do some little dots in the background for like some snow. Uh, I didn't go on top of the images. You absolutely could. I didn't, um, just because I had flicked the Perfect Pearls on top of them. So I just kind of left that to dry. And and then I did want to bring in, this is my N3 Copic marker. This is just to give some ground to my images. I'm going to also bring in the N1 Copic marker. And again, that's just to blend out the N3 a little bit. Um, I just, I wanted my images to look like they weren't just floating. Uh, and since they go outside of the circle, the circle can't really provide them with a a base so that's kind of my trick there I just like to bring in uh, usually the neutral grays and that kind of adds uh, some ground to the images and then I brought in my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I'm going to adhere this down onto a mat that I trimmed out uh, which is an eighth of an inch smaller than my A2 base and then my card panel is an eighth of an inch smaller than that uh, so yeah I am in a mat a almost every card I make I think honestly I just love matting everything it's just a thing for me I just love that pop of a different color behind it in this case it's black to tie in with the silhouetted images um, this is just a thing for me I kind of uh, I like to add mats to almost every card I make I think I think there's like one card in here I didn't add a mat to but I did give it a border so I mean really it's quite 
kind of the same thing. And then I'm going to bring in some of the Simus's stamp. This is the assorted moonstone sequence. Uh, this is one of my favorite sequence sets. You're going to see I bring it out a couple of times in this. It just matches so well with every card that I make because they're just like clear silvery-esque sequence. So they just go beautifully with <laughs> pretty much every card I've ever made. So I'm going to bring this up closer. You can see you guys get a close up look of how this card ended up looking. And you can see that beautiful sparkle in the background. There you can kind of see the, the snowflake stamp set now. Uh, but I, yeah, I know it's kind of a bit hard to tell. And then I did put a little sentiment on the inside as well with the shaded lilac ink. So that is the first card. Here is a quick close up of it. And then we're going to jump right into the second card. Now, the second card, honestly, <laughs> was probably a bit over the top, but I get to making and I generally forget. So we are going to make a slimline card. So for my slimline cards, I like to take a full-sized piece of cardstock. I cut off four inches and then I... I, that's how I make my my card bases. So they end up being seven by eight and a half inches and then I score them at the three and a half inch mark. And I am going to give it a black mat. Go figure. And this is going to be again the eighth of an inch smaller. And I grabbed the cardstock that got trimmed off of the uh, base by accident. I actually am going to use some Strathmore watercolor cardstock. Um, but that's not what I'm trimming here. But this is the right size. I just I grabbed the wrong piece of cardstock that was sitting on the desk there. So I'm going to trim out a piece of uh, Strathmore watercolor cardstock for this next card. Uh, but I do make it about an eighth of an inch smaller. And because I always use my little trimmer. Um, the slim lines are always a bit interesting because I can't measure out the length so I kind of just eyeball it and then trim off small amounts as I go to kind of get it to work so I mean you could of course bring out a bigger trimmer I just I have a hard time keeping them in the frame so I can't have it's harder for me to show you uh, what I'm doing when I do it that way so I just I have a tendency to work with what I've got on my desk but yeah and then I brought in the big poinsettia uh, stamp from the stamp set and I'm going to clear heat emboss this image because I want to watercolor around it. You will have seen from the thumbnail, this is going to be a rainbow card. Um, I love rainbows. I love bright colors. I love uh, shiny things. Like I just, I, I love everything that's a little bit extra. So for this, I am going to heat emboss the image, <clears throat> excuse me, because I don't want the color to go into the poinsettia or poinsettia images. So I'm going to heat emboss it, heat emboss it with clear embossing powder, uh, and then I'm going to melt that until it's smooth and melted. And I, I know that I don't really need to show the melting process, but honestly, I love watching it. I think that it, it doesn't seem to matter how long I've been crafting. Watching embossing powder melt is probably one of my favorite things ever, especially metallics. Although watching clear ones melt are really fun too. I just love it. Like it's, it's like magic. I know that it's not, I know that it's plastic that's melting, but I, it just, it's like magic and it just makes me happy every time I do it. So I have a tendency to keep this in my videos just cause I love it. So I heat bossed, I heat embossed that and melted it till it was smooth. And then we're going to jump right into the water coloring, sort of. Um, I'm going to use distress oxide reinkers and I have wilted violet, picked raspberry, carved pumpkin, cracked pistachio and peacock feathers those are the five colors that I'm going to use and I chose to use the reinkers just because they give you such a vibrant color but then when they oxidize with water they create such a cool effect so this is probably one of my favorite um, reinker techniques that I like to do I just love the technique so this is sped way up but I didn't want to cut out any of this kind of I mean I'm going to call it water coloring although I don't know that it really is but I just really wanted to keep that in so you guys could see it. So I brought in a wet brush and I put water all around the image part that I wanted to be that specific color. So in this case, it's the wilted violet. And then I brought in a smaller brush with a little bit of the color on it and put it around the image and then I brought in the first brush and used the water to pull the color out I hope that that makes sense um, that's why I'm going to show it to you several times just because I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to explain it very well but I brought in and I have three different sizes of brushes going here um, I used a bigger brush so I believe I used a 12 to bring in the water and then I used a 6 to bring in the color and in the end I bring in a 2 just to clean up the image a little bit I didn't keep that in just because it, I literally just used some clean, clear water um, and then put it on any part that I felt it kind of went into the poinsettia image or poinsettia image um, and then cleaned that up. So it, it, I didn't show it, but uh, that's how I cleaned it up. 
and then I do go back and forth between the colors. I jump from one side of the card to the other because I don't want the colors to mix too much. Like I do want there to be obvious, not lines so much because I want them to blend a bit, but edges to the color almost, if that makes sense. Like I don't want the green and the blue to merge and then make a different color like I want them to be their own color and then just kind of have the colors touching I hope that that kind of makes sense if not leave me a comment and ask questions um, I always read and answer every comment that I get uh, I love interacting with you guys it's one of my favorite parts of this whole experience is getting to inspire and uh, see that people want to want to communicate and want to talk to me so if you ever have any questions about anything that I'm making or anything at all uh, feel free to ask because I, I want to I want this to be a community where we can have a conversation. So, and then I brought my N3 Copic marker back in and I'm just adding shadows to anywhere like a petal, I guess. I mean, points at us. I don't know that they're petals or leaves. I'm going to call them petals in this instance, but um, the petals of the poinsettia flower, anywhere that there's one sitting on top of the other, or one of those petals is sitting on top of the leaves behind them, I'm going to add a shadow. This is going to be a very subtle thing, but when I'm done here, I'm going to hold it up and you can see the difference between the one that I added shadowing to and the ones that have nothing. Like, can you kind of see how different they look there? Like, sorry, that was super quick, but because I have this sped up because it's a pretty long video to start with. So I, I did have to speed this way up so you could kind of see a bit of every card. Um, and this one was, of course, the longest because I always get a little bit over the top with my slimline cards. Uh, I don't know why. I just love them. So I tend to be a bit uh, extreme. And I had this card idea in my head and I just I had to make it. So and anytime something warps, I always stick my Misty on top of it to weigh it down. And then once everything was dry and adhered to the the mat that I made it. I brought in the Merry Christmas sentiment stamp from the stamp set and I'm just going to stamp that twice again because at this point I, I hadn't used it um, and I just stamp it down in the same Versa fine onyx black ink and then we're gonna adhere that down to the oh no here okay this is really cool this could have been a front of its own card uh I really wanted to use the ink that was still sitting on my little palette there so I brought in a makeup sponge and I just dipped it in the color to like kind of bring the color up off of the the palette. And then I just pounced it on top of the stamp back in my Misty. And I have the card base inside out in my Misty so I can stamp down on it. Uh, and then, yeah, I just went back and forth with these colors. And this is so pretty. This could have honestly been its own. It was a mess, but it could have been its own card front. Like, check out how this turned out. Like, I think it's just gorgeous. Um... Like I just, it's so pretty. <laughs> I might have to try that with a different idea for a different card a different day, but I just was so excited about how that turned out and how it looked in the end. Uh, and I did add a little sentiment on the inside as well, which I will show you in the end when I hold it up closer. So being that I am extra, I am going to bring in a whole bunch of <laughs> glitter on all of these cards. First of all, they're Christmas cards. Second of all, today is the, the day that this is actually going up. Of course, I've recorded this a little while ago, but uh, this is actually Christmas. Uh, so Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates. If you don't celebrate, I hope that you're having a great day regardless. Um, but this is Christmas and I will be with my family and I made this and I just, I really wanted to share some beautiful Christmas cards with you guys on Christmas. So I know that this is a very non-traditional color palette. I do try to jump between traditional and non-traditional. Um, I love bright colors. I love shiny things. That's just kind of me. So I have a tendency towards those things, but I mean, you could have done this any color palette you wanted. I just, I like rainbow. So that's what I did. And then I brought in some Nouveau drops. I believe this is silver, uh, sparkle drops. It could be silver or it's clear. I don't remember off the top of my head, but and I just it put that in the centers of all the poinsettias. Uh, and that's kind of going to be the end of this card. I really thought about adding some some sequins to it. But I let, let the glitter all over the petals be the glitter for this. So I'm going to hold it up here. You can't see the glimmer pen or the sh shimmer pen as much as I wish you could. But I can tell you in real life, this card is so, so shiny. It is so beautiful. I'm not sure I can send it away. I might have to hold on to it. And then here's the inside. Look at that. Is that not stunning? Oh, I love it. It's going to be a card front. I'm going to have to figure out a way to make that its own card. And then I'm going to bring this up so you can see it closer. And that is the finished card too. I just, I'm so in love with this card. It might be my favorite. And then for my third one, I really wanted to use some of those ephemera pieces in the kit 
And a friend of mine and I, we do monthly um, artist trading card trades. That's a ATC. Uh, and so this is for her. So I'm, I really wanted the Santa Claus to stand out more than he's standing out because he is vintage, right? That's the whole premise of that. Uh, and I really just, I wanted him to stand out. So I brought in an R29 red Copic marker and I'm just coloring in his suit. And you're going to see when I adhere everything down, it really helps him stand out against the rest of the ATC because he kind of got lost and then it was a bit difficult to tell what the focal was supposed to be on the ATC. So I brought in tumbled glass again and I'm just blending it kind of mostly in the center, but I do bring a little bit of the color out to the edges, but it is mostly in the center of the ATC. That's because that's where he's going to stand. Uh, so I just really wanted most of the color to kind of be behind him to help that red pop even more against the, the rest of the color. And I am going to bring in here in a minute because I was trying to go for a, a vintage-esque uh, ATC. Now, keep in mind, vintage is not my normal style. Um, not like vintage is stunning. I love people who can pull together these vintage pieces and they just look amazing. It's just as a general rule for me personally, that's not the style that I lean towards. And of course, I had to put some perfect pearls in the background because... I like all the shiny things <laughs> and I brought in those snowflakes again and I'm just I'm doing first generation and second generation stamping in the background just to create some added texture it's the same color so it's not going to stand out but it does do a little bit of extra behind everything that goes on the card but yeah vintage is not my normal style I like to dabble in it though I think it's stunning um, but <laughs> I, I think I struggle a little bit to kind of pull that together but I think that this stuff turns out pretty cute in the end so it works. Uh, and yeah, so I'm just adding a little bit of extra texture in the background. And here you can kind of see where it just, it adds a little bit to the background very, very subtly, but it is there. And then this is where I bring in some vintage photo and I'm going to blend it around the outside of the ATC as well as the ephemera pieces. So the tree, I do it on the side of the trees that I know are going to actually be in the scene because the rest is going to be cut off because the only rule to an artist trading card or an ATC is that it has to be two and a half by three and a half inches. It can't be bigger than that or it's not an ATC. That, that's kind of the thing, right? So um, with that, I did make sure that I trimmed off all of the pieces that were hanging on the outside. And if you've never heard of artist trading cards, they're wonderful. They're cards that you create, as I said, that the two and a half by three and a half inches, uh, and then you trade them with other artists. Uh, I have a collection of the cards. I love them. I look through them. I admire them. They give me inspiration. Um, there's just so many amazingly talented artists out there that I've traded with and that I continue trading with that, uh, it's just a wonderful way to make something that you, you trade with someone else, or you can give them away or some people sell them. I have seen that. Uh, although then they're not called artist trading cards. They have another name at that point, but, uh, yeah. So I, I just, I think it's such a cool way to share art. So, uh, I, I like, I love ATCs. I make them pretty often. And then here you can see, I'm just trimming off the excess pieces on the edges there so that they are all flush with the card because the card is the correct size. Uh, and then I'm going to take that little label that is another piece of ephemera. And it's the only piece that's going to be a bit raised on my whole uh, ATC, just because I wanted it to have a little bit of dimension and kind of ground Santa, like he kind of looks like he's standing on top of it. So I brought in my tiny attacher and I just stapled the little sentiment on there. And then of course I had to add some white splashes because why not, right? Like might as well add some snow effect to this. Uh, I just, I like how that looks. So I did that. I believe this is my number six round brush. It's the same brush I used to put color on the slimline card. And then that is this little guy. So I'm going to hold him up and show him to you up close. I'd love to know what you guys think. Did he kind of look vintage-esque? I'd love to know what you think. I mean, I guess tumbled glass is not really vintage, but I needed something a little bit more colorful in there. And there you can see the red pops more uh, with his, uh, the other colors in there. I find that the red suit just stands up a little bit better. So this next card is uh, is my first official shaker card. Uh, I have a tendency towards flat shaker cards as opposed to legitimate shaker cards. So this is the first one I've ever made. Uh, so bear with me. It does take me a sec to kind of sort it all out. But we do get there in the end. And I am going to use a piece of ephemera for the actual focal on this card as well. So I brought in two circle dies from my nested circle set. And I cut out a window in that panel that I just made. And then I brought in a piece of pattern paper as well and with the bigger circle cut that out that's going to be the background piece 
behind my shaker circle. Now again, you wouldn't have to cut out the circle. I just did that because I didn't want to waste the pattern paper. You could have just cut a square and put it behind it. That would have worked too. And then I brought in some champagne glitter cardstock and I brought the two circles back in and I'm going to cut myself a frame that's going to go around the circle. Now I didn't get it perfect. <laughs> so there is actually a smaller side of my frame, but it doesn't really matter because the ephemera sits on top of it. So you can't really tell that my frame is a bit uh, askew, but that, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't even know if you would really notice. Uh, it's sh super beautiful glittery cardstock. Like here you can see one side is slightly smaller than the other. I don't even know if you can tell, honestly. I mean, I know because I was looking at it, so I, I noticed it, but. And with the ephemera, I really wanted the bow off the top of this charm or an ornament whatever this is uh, to go on top of my lantern so I just trimmed it off of that piece of ephemera and left the white border because all of this has the white border and then I'm going to kind of puff up the little bow piece and and then I'm going to adhere it down to the little top of the lantern there um, I don't know if I even show you when I glue it I just adhered it on but I did kind of curve up the little bow part of this to add a little bit more dimension to this card. Uh, and then I'm going to start adhering some pieces together. So I have some acetate here that I trimmed down into a square to go behind the window. Uh, and it does have like a release piece on it. it it's obviously it's going to be clear once I remove that release piece. But I usually keep it on there until I'm actually ready to do something with it. And I did use my liquid glue to kind of get this all situated and a little bit kind of squeezed out um, onto the acetate. So it is visible. You can see it. But, I mean, again, you would be hard to notice it because I wiped it off right away and um, you'd have to be looking for it. So there you can see that there is a side that's slightly smaller than the other on the bottom, but I'm going to use a piece of uh, my ephemera is going to cover that. Now, this is kind of funny. I wasn't sure how I was going to get my circle piece color, like the colored piece, the, the plaid piece to adhere to the base in the right spot, but it stuck to the static of my acetate. So I just went with it. I lined it up the way I wanted it to be, put some glue on the back and then put it on the base and then just removed the front panel because I didn't put any glue on that. Uh, and then it just was in the right place. So I didn't have to worry about it. And then I brought in my 3M foam tape and I just uh, double it over to have enough room for the shake and I cut it in half and then I removed the uh, release paper and then I'm going to go around the circle. Uh, this is the first time I've done this and now again this is sped up quite a bit because I this video is long uh, and it's just this is the first time I've done this. So I think I didn't have one side down quite properly and a little bit of glitter does get out. I fix it so it doesn't really matter but it did end up getting out a little bit. So, um, I mean, I think this was a pretty good win, to be honest. Um, and then I am going to just use the leftover of the other half of that piece that I doubled to kind of make sure that this is all the same height, uh, because otherwise the cardstock would shag. Uh, sag, sorry. And then I run in my anti-static powder tool to kind of get it so that the um, pieces wouldn't stick to the acetate. So I brought in some Distress Rock Candy Glitter. This is by far my favoriteest glitter and some of those same uh, Moonstone sequins. I think they're Moonstone. They might be Moonshine. They'll be linked down below if they're Moonstone or Moon. I think they're Moonstone actually. And I just dropped some of those in the center of the panel where I know the shaker card's going to go. And I originally I thought about putting glue on the um, foam tape just so I had more time to kind of line it up. But in the end, I just go for it. And I used my stick, my scissors there to hold that down so that I wouldn't uh, have any problems lining it up. But I do actually misalign it the first time. And luckily, I just it, I hadn't actually really put it down yet. So I just lifted it back up and then lined it up again and then called it because I'm going to adhere it down. So uh, you could add glue if you're concerned. I was a little, but honestly, I just kind of went for it. And then here you can see I shake it and on the, I don't know if you guys can even really see some of the little, like the, the the small glitter kind of seeped out on the one side but that's okay I actually took my liquid glue my barely art glue with a really fine tip and just stuck it in the hole that has was kind of sitting out um and just adhered it shut and now it doesn't do that because I've shaken it since 
and then I'm going to adhere that really beautiful piece of uh, ephemera on the top and then I'm going to bring in some more sequins because why not they're stunning um, I just I love these sequins I don't know they're by far my favorite they go with everything you make it doesn't matter if it's vintage or rainbow or it doesn't matter because they're just these beautiful silvery-esque clear sequins and they just match so well so I mean I like to put them on all the things so I don't know and I don't lean towards sequins as a general rule but every once in a while sequins are just superior and they're beautiful so that's that card and I'm going to hold it up so you can kind of check it out here I'm even going to shake it around for you in the mic so you can hear it here let's see you Isn't that cool? Like, I, okay, I know that this is, it's just a shaker card and like everybody's done them, but I just, it's my first one. So I got really excited about it. And then I did stamp a sentiment in the inside with bundled sage. So here is a close up photo of that card. And now we're going to jump into the fifth and final card. So this card is going to be a mini slimline card. So for my mini slimline cards, I like to cut my bases down to six by six inches. And then I will score at the three inch mark. That is my preferred size. Now, again, I am going to create a black mat for this um, and a panel uh, just because that's what I do. I just, I love the look. So I am going to cut uh, a panel down to be about a quarter of an inch smaller. And then I cut the black mat to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than the base. And I brought back in the same tumble glass and shaded lilac and the blending tools. And I'm just going to create my background. I just went between these two colors um, because again, I love how they look together and I love the wintry feel. And for this one, I am going to bring in that really pretty snowflake stencil that came in the kit. So I didn't use the 3D embossing folder, shockingly. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I'll have to bring that in on some other card. But I mean, I had so many ideas. I could have kept going, but my November kit showed up. So I really want to make something with that. So I kind of had to limit myself here. So you just saw me spray on some pixie spray to the background. I did that inside, which I mean, do that with some caution um it's like minus 20 outside here so i'm not going outside to spray it i'm gonna be honest um but just i mean don't inhale it <laughs> don't stand above it and inhale it and you're good uh, and then you saw me take some of the stick off with my hand just because i wanted it to not leave a whole bunch of sticky on the background of my uh panel and then i'm going to blend on some wilted violet distress oxide ink i love purple <laughs> i don't know if you guys know this <laughs> but i love purple so I just, and mine is super juicy. That's why you see that I like, it took me very little ink to get the whole thing covered. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I brought in the wilted violet and then I'm going to lift the stencil off so you can check out how that looks on there. Isn't that pretty? I just think it's pretty. And I'm going to splash on some perfect pearls because uh, that's what I do. I love, you know what? I love shimmer and shine. I know you guys know this because I've said it about 60 times, but I just, I can't get enough of it, especially on Christmas cards. I just love it. So I splashed it all over the background. Um, and then I think I'm going to layer this bad boy up for you. Is that something else that I love? <laughs> it's funny how much I actually do that oh no I'm gonna cut the sentiment all right so I brought in a piece of white glitter cardstock and the merry christmas die uh, and then I just cut that out now of course you could layer this you could add dimension you could do so many things I chose to leave it flat um I don't know why I just because maybe it's because this is a super delicate uh stents like or sorry die set like the words are quite delicate. Uh, they're stunning. I love how delicate they are. And I think that they go really well with this card just because the background is already eye catching. So they don't, it doesn't need to be a big sentiment, but the shimmering cardstock still catches your eye. So uh, I just, I think it's pretty, I don't know. That's just me. Um, and then I'm going to use my barely art glue with the fine tip to adhere this down to the uh, panel and I am going to pounce off some of the glue I didn't want it to ooze out um, as you know distress oxide inks are water soluble so they react with water or any fluid really um, so I didn't want a whole bunch of glue to kind of squeeze out behind my sentiment and then it would it would lift color so you would see it uh, you're gonna see that actually in when I go and add some glitter on top of this the glitter is supposed to be clear However, it's going to pull up a bunch of the purple, which I think actually looks stunning. I don't know. You guys will have to tell me what you think, but 
I think it was really quite pretty. And then I brought in my Nouveau Deluxe glue uh, and I just used that to adhere the card base or the panel to the mat and then the mat to the base. Uh, you don't need this many glues. Um, I have, these are my two favorite though, uh, Nouveau Deluxe glue and Barely Art glue are vastly my favorite. Um, I tend to use them both in conjunction just because uh, of the fine tip on the Barely Art glue. But I mean, you could use whatever glue tickles your pickle. I mean, whatever makes you happy. This is just the ones that make me happy. But I have had people make comments about me using too much glue. And honestly, it's just because I would be so upset if it came apart. Like I spend a lot of time making my cards. So the thought that I mail it to somebody and like the panel falls off because I was too chintzy to put enough glue on the background, like it upsets me. It's the same reason I use really heavyweight cardstock for everything. Uh, so I'm going to bring in those same Nouveau Deluxe, I believe it's silver glitter drops. And I'm going to put them on all of the, the dots and then the center of the snowflakes as well. And then I'm going to hold this up. So when I hold it up at the end of this video, they're not dry yet. So they kind of look a little bit milky. But when you see the final photo at the end, you'll see that they actually, they're purple because they pulled up some of that wilted violet and kind of changed color. And I think that it's stunning. Like I have it in front of me right here so I can see the purple, but I love it. Like I just think it, they turned out super pretty. So here you're going to see, I'm going to um, lift this up to show you them. And there they kind of look a bit milky. Um, and excuse my tea in the corner there. I was drinking tea while I was doing this, but... Um, you can see that they're kind of a bit milky looking, uh, but when you see the picture here, they are purple, like very obviously purple, which I just think looks so cool. So that is the five cards that I have for you guys. I would love to know what you think. Did you have a favorite? Do you have any questions? Do you want to talk about anything? I would love to hear. So if you like this video, please leave me a like, leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday. Merry Christmas, everybody. And thank you so much. Bye-bye for now.